I don't know about you, but what I hate about editing isn't the editing itself, it's the admin around it. Project management, keeping the clients up to date, it's just really frustrating. And I literally tested hundreds of AI tools to fix this, but today I'll share three that actually work. And let's start out with the first one, ChatGPT, but not just ChatGPT, of course. I'm not just gonna show you ChatGPT. No, we're gonna use ChatGPT to help us edit. Imagine this, you have an hour of footage to go through. You can literally just export that transcript, get it into ChatGPT, and let ChatGPT do the heavy lifting. For example, I have the interview with Simon here and I have the text here. And by the way, you can transcribe your footage just by clicking the transcribe button in Premiere. And for me, this is the easiest way, but there's also other ways you can use tools for this, but you can even upload it to YouTube and then export the transcript from YouTube. You just upload your video on private and then you can download the captions. And in Premiere, we can go to these three little dots in the text tab and we can go to export and then export to text file. I always like that option to use the text file option. And then we can just uh, save this somewhere. And then I have this simple prompt. And by the way, you don't even have to copy or paste this. I actually created a custom GPT for you. Link is in the description. You can just use that. So the only thing you have to do is open your text file. In this case, it's this. I can just select everything and copy that. Right click copy and I can paste that in here and then click on send and it will load a bit. And there we go. Five strongest short clips and it will give the timestamps the exact text that's being stated or being spoken about and then also why it works. So uh, relatable, Rex to riches, uh, motivational short. It also gives some reasoning and it gives you a few options. And what's really nice is that you have these timestamps. So you can literally just put these timestamps in your notes or somewhere else and then go back to your editing program like Premiere or DaVinci and then cut something out of it. Now, what is really important to note is that when you go to Premiere and you make these edits, don't cut them out of it immediately. First, make the cuts. And then what I always do is I move it to a extra line. And why that is important is if we are already making cuts, we're moving this, then the time code doesn't match up anymore with the ChatGPT. For example, if I now remove this and then uh, move this, or I want to move this to the beginning, or I move this somewhere else, then move this to the left. If I now go back to ChatGPT, this current timestamp doesn't <laughs> line up anymore. And this is great for podcasts, but you can also use this for long form video, especially if you want to cut short form videos from a long form video. This is an amazing tool and it will save you so much time. Because again, imagine if you have to go through an edit of an hour and you have to rewatch it a few times, only watching the video will already take you an hour. Or maybe if you watch it in two times speed, then even then it will take you half an hour to watch the full video. So imagine you're competing with an editor that does watch the full podcast twice or three times. It will take that editor one and a half hour just to watch the video where you can just pick a few things of this and you have an edit done. But even using timestamps and then editing it all together will take you time. And there's even a better way that I use. Now, one AI tool that I use that is even quicker than this is Submagic, who is also kindly sponsoring this video. Submagic is every short form editor's dream because with Submagic, creating engaging captions is literally just a click of a button. Now, you might be thinking, Tom, Premiere Pro also has a built-in caption generator. And you're right. However, with Submagic, you get pre-animated captions with a huge variety of popular styles that are easily customizable. You upload your raw clip or trimmed footage, Submagic automatically generates professional captions and you select which style you like and that's it. But it doesn't stop at captions. Submagic takes all the hard work out of your edit by automatically adding B-rolls, zooms, transitions, sound effects, and even music. So everything you need for scroll stepping content with literally a few clicks. So if you're looking for a way to create short form content even quicker, check out Submagic. The link is down below and there's also a discount code to so check it out. The second tool I want to use is N8N. It's quite an advanced AI automation tool, but we can start from scratch here and with the N8N automation we're going to create basically you will have a workflow where if someone like a client uploads a file into your Google Drive you will get a notification in your Slack so you or if you have an editor under you can start working on it so for example I'm going to click here to create a first step I'm going to click on on app event and then we can search for Google Drive click on that and then on changes involving a specific folder. Now we have to link our Google Drive, uh, so create a new credential. Now we need to have a API and this is nothing too crazy. It sounds really scary, but we can just go to Google API console. You can try it for free, but also with the credits, you don't need much credits to use this. So we can just try it for free. Then let's go to the left in the navigation menu 
APIs and services and go to the library. Now you get all the Google services and we can search for uh, the Google Drive API. There we go. Click on that and click on enable. Now we can go to credentials and then you see, remember to configure OAuth consent screen. So we need to configure the consent screen. Click on that, get started. App name, you can use whatever you want. For example, uh, client Google Drive, click on next. I'm gonna use internal, uh, next. Fill in your email address, next. I agree and continue and create. Now we can go to the navigation menu, go to the APIs again, but now click on credentials, click on create credentials, OAuth client ID, application type, web application, client name, I'm gonna keep the same. And for the authorized redirect URLs, I'm gonna paste this standard N8N cloud link, which will also be in your N8N. Now click on create and there you go. You have a client ID and a client secret and we need these codes. And by the way, you only have to do this once. So don't be too scared that you have to go through this all the time. So paste the client ID, paste the client secret, and then we can click on sign in with Google. Now we can just allow everything from our account and our account is connected. Perfect. And now the poll time, uh, you keep it on every minute. The folder, uh, we can select a folder from the list. And here I see all my uh, folders in my Google Drive. And the cool thing is, of course, is that we can make a folder specifically for the client. So for example, I created a client X folder here. So I can search that here, client X, there we go. We can select that and then watch for uh, file created. Uh, that's exactly what we want. You can also change some other things, but we want file created in this case. We can test the event and there's no data, but that makes sense because there's no folder or file uploaded. Now we can go back to our canvas and as you can see, we now have a Google Drive trigger. Now that we created our Google Drive trigger, we can do multiple things. So we can either drag this to the right and then uh, create a new AI automation. And this is really cool because for example, you can do an interaction with Google Gemini and then we can analyze the video, first make a transcript of it. You can even make a base edit out of it. But for now, I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna show you uh, the model Slack. So we just can search for Slack and I just want to send a message. And then we can link a Slack account. And what's nice about this is that we don't have to use the API for this. You can just connect your account and fill in your Slack workspace. Click on allow and there we go. Connection successful. Account connected and then I can uh, select message, send and then send message to user and I'm gonna send it to myself. And now we can change the message to client X. Just uploaded a file to the drive ready to edit. You can even include the drive link or you can even use an expression to do so but we can just execute this and now we'll get a message once the client uploads something. The possibilities are really endless. A uh, link to end it and is also in the description. Now the last tool is using a project management tool and reusing templates, for example, using Asana or Notion AI. For example, Asana has some templates that you can use, which I'd really like to use. And by the way, you can also just use the free version and just duplicate a project. And with Notion, what you can do is, for example, ask the AI, create a to-do table for an editing client, including the video title, deadline, uh, stage, feedback rounds with check marks, and also a link to the final edit. It will give this really cool uh, template. We can move this to the top. And then you can click on share, go to publish. You can publish it. And what we can even do is make this more automated. So let's first turn this table into a database and then we can hit enter enter and then we can do slash button and then we create a button and we can create a call this a new video you can even add a nice emoji to it and then a button is clicked that's fine and then do new action we can add a new page into the tracker that we just made new database we should actually change the name but hey ho and then i'm gonna keep this this is fine what i do however want to do is that it opens it so add another action open page and then we can select the page from this automation so page edit and then press done so what happens now if i click on new video it will create a new video here and it will open it automatically i can type the name and I can type all the values here. As you can see, the columns are unnamed. We do want to change that. Uh, so we do that by going into the column and changing this to deadline and this to current stage and this to uh, feedback rounds and final edit link. 
there we go. And we can even remove that first row. We don't need that. Uh, so what happens now, if I click again on the new video, it will open it. And as you can see, we'll have all the data that we need. I can fill it in, can fill in the name of the video title, and it will automatically pop up here. And there you have it. Three tools that can really improve your editing workflow. Again, a big shout out to Submagic. I love their software. I almost use it every single day. Check out Submagic in the description. There's also a coupon code. Then of course, like always, thanks for all the support. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And then I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.